Today I speak to a man with over 20 years in the experience of graphic design, branding and marketing. Craig Falconer, creative partner and co-founder of North 55, a company based here within the Middle East. He speaks with me about his experiences in school, how he managed to achieve this position and what advice he would give to others hoping to do the same. Let's see what he has to say. Craig, thank you very much for joining us today with this with this talk. Could you please um, tell us a little bit about you? Who are you and what is it that you do for a living? So my name is Craig. Um, I've lived in Dubai now for 22 years um, and I set up my own uh, graphic design consultancy with a business partner called North 55. Um, so we have an office in Dubai, but we service clients throughout the world. What is the usual day like for in your position as a kind of creative partner of a branding company? The day essentially breaks down into three components and they're not always evenly split across those three disciplines. But my average week would consist of client relationships. So that's managing existing relationships with clients as well as developing new business opportunities. The second one would be the internal team management. So that would be acting as a creative director and overseeing the other designers and, and what the projects they are working on, as well as overseeing some of the administrative roles and also overseeing the project management team that we have. And then the third role, which I've always fought very hard to retain, is just to be an independent designer within the team. So as though, although I operate the business and run the business essentially, um, I really find it key that I spend at least two to three hours a day um, being what I, what, what I always wanted to be, which was a designer. So looking back to those days when you were in school, what was, what was art like for you then? What, what was the normal lesson like? A lot different from your conventional subjects at school in the sense that you could explore and experiment a little. I think the advantage I had in that scenario was my art teacher was very open-minded about how you interpreted a, a brief or a project. So even early on, maybe at the age of 14, 15, I knew my, my artistic skills were more graphically driven. So even within a, an artist's brief, um, I was allowed to interpret it in a slightly more graphic way. I didn't really 100% know exactly how you got into a job at that point, but I did know that that's what I enjoyed. But I did, I did also keep business studies in my A-levels. And in hindsight, I think it's a very, very sensible thing to do. I think that the, the high percentage of creatives that end up working for themselves or, or being somehow responsible for managing the business side of creativity is extremely high. High percentage of designers or, 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 or anyone in the creative world that has to at some point understand how costs work, how, how uh, invoices work, the basics of business really. Unfortunately, there's a lot of creatives that are very talented but can't really mature in a way that allows them to work successfully for themselves and craft a career out of it because they just don't understand the business mechanics behind creativity. I had no desire to be a, an artist in the conventional sort of uh, sense. I always wanted to be a commercial artist and I know that's a, that's a subtle difference, but I always understood that what I was doing I enjoyed and I, and I saw the aesthetic value of it, but I understood that there was a a commercial side and, and probably more important for the clients there has to be a return of investment as well so I think even at a level you kind of start to appreciate how the arts and the creative industries are a business. How, how then did you get from from there to being here and now running a successful company for the past 20 years? The biggest leap is probably making that transition from education into a job and and, and it is a leap um, you might feel that you understand the discipline that you've studied, but you don't really understand working life. And suddenly you're put into an environment of people who are a lot older than you. Um, it's a very different demographic than you've been used to through your student life. So that's probably the biggest leap. And it's not all about getting the job. I, I truly, truly believe that the first three or four, maybe five years of your career is about surrounding yourself with the right people and, and getting some good mentors. So you need to work really hard to identify who will be your best mentor. And once you find those people, and, and if you find a great company, you'll find two or three of those in that company. And if you can find that right company, then you really have to switch your mind off to the earning potential. Just don't worry about what you're earning and, and treat the knowledge base and the, and the secondary education factor of it is the value point at that point. Because once you've done four or five years in a, in a good, credible agency, working with good, good mentors and having people to sort of coach you along, 
then that's when you can branch out a little bit, be a little bit more brave and, and maybe chase a little bit more money. I think one of the biggest jumps in all honesty is the pace and the, and the, and the worth it, work ethic. Um, to be successful in our industry, you have to have a strong work ethic. You also have to be flexible, as I've mentioned, you have to be adaptable, um, but also you have to have a real passion. So I think, I think what, what you kind of take away from the mentors is you, you look at them and you see how much effort they put into things and you see that they, 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 they come up with ideas and then they scrumple them up and then they start again and then they revisit ideas and then they, they pin them on a wall and look at them for a few days and then refine them and then have, sometimes have the courage to, to, to go back after, after they've finished a the project and, and, and decide that it isn't right and start again. And, and it's all of those little insights that you see, but those early days you have to almost treat as, a, as an extension of your education. For you, if you were looking at saying, for example, bringing someone into the company, would you then prefer that they would be specialized within that specific area rather than being, as you said, multidisciplined? I mean, it, it really depends what level you're recruiting. If you're recruiting someone senior, I, I want them to show a level of expertise in a certain discipline. If you're recruiting someone who's quite junior, then I, I, I do respect that they're still finding their feet a little bit in terms of where their specialities lie. And because technology is moving at such a quick pace and, and what we actually are expected to do from a client perspective is moving almost every month, then I actually quite like the young mentality of having that open mind to not be too sort of boxed in at the early stages of their career. What you would expect when you're trying to recruit someone at that level is it's all about the ideas and it's not really about the execution. Um, I get a little bit frustrated when I meet university graduates and they've got a very, very polished portfolio of work but you scratch the surface and there's not a lot of thinking there. There's not a lot of ideas. It's been all about the polished execution, but the polished execution is actually the easy bit. It's the last 10, 15% of the job. And to be quite honest, I can pay somebody to polish these ideas up. What really you need to be as a designer is an ideas person. And, and I think that's where you get lost in the computer a little bit. I think you need to take yourself out of that world of making everything look too perfect and go back to the discipline of coming up with great creative thoughts. And that's ultimately what the creative industry is about. People buy creative thinking. They don't really buy, or they certainly don't spend a lot of money on the polishing up of a product because the polishing up has become a bit of a commodity these days. So the good designers are still all about the ideas and then there'll always be a team around you in any of the disciplines that we've mentioned that can make that look great for you on your behalf. But if you try and be an expert in everything, I tend to feel that you become a bit average across the board. So I do feel that there's a sense that you have to still be able to direct if you want to be a successful creative. What would what would a good portfolio look like to you then? I mean, not the specifics, but I mean, what would you expect to see over the first pages? I think if they're a junior designer coming straight out of the university, or and just to make it clear, I'm I'm not suggesting every designer or any creative has to do a degree. I I don't believe in our industry; it's a mandatory. Um, unfortunately, the world has moved that way to make it suggest that it is. But in all honesty, I don't really care about the, the, the senior sort of qualification that these guys have. I think their portfolio outranks that every single day. But within the portfolio, I want to see a mixture of sketchbook ideas. And when I say that, I want to see the actual real nitty gritty sketchbooky stuff. That could be photographs. It could be clippings from reference points. It could be computer renders that don't quite go well, it's, it's ideas written down in, in the written form. I, I just want to see the thinking process. I don't really care what the end product looks like. What I really care about is the thinking process that's taking you on that journey and maybe where you've gone wrong in that thinking process. And I just want to see that all in a sketchbook or however it's going to be presented. Um, you don't necessarily have to have hand skills, which are amazing. That could be a digital sketchbook. It could be written or typed notes. I just want to see the thinking that's gone in to what your end solution has become. And incredibly extensive clientele over the 20 years that, that you have been out here working. For you, has there been a project that you've been involved in which is a favorite, something that you kind of hold quite near and dear to you? If I was to be asked which piece of creative work would we hold up there and say we're most proud of, was probably um, the AFC Asian Cup work, because um, it's a global event, it's in sports, which made that, that little bit more fun. Um, and we were given, it was a creative pitch at the time. So we competed for the work against other agencies and we submitted what we felt was a very strong solution. And at that 
particular moment, the client liked that solution and didn't tinker and tailor with it too much. So it was almost a pure solution that saw the light of day, which is quite unusual in our industry. And then once it was finished, it got, it got global exposure. So from that perspective, it was really fulfilling as a small independent agency based in a, in a city in the Middle East to be able to have that sort of work in their portfolio. Craig, in closing, looking at the idea of if you could kind of have the opportunity to talk back to that version of yourself sitting through their secondary schooling, GCSE, A-levels, what advice or what skills do you think would be most crucial for, for that person to succeed in the world that exists now? Find the right people to surround yourself with, and that's even at the age of 14. So if you surround yourself with the right teachers, and I know that's slightly sometimes out of your control, but you will have teachers you can gravitate towards. They may not always be in the creative world, but people who you can sort of use as a mentor. Then your friend circle, that's important. You know, work ethic's important, ethics are important. All of the basic human skills I think are super important and they, they've become really, really um, a key part of, of, of becoming a successful sort of employee, regardless of what sector you go into. And then once you get through the education phase, it's, it's the mentorship in the early days is really, really important. Find the right people to work with. And if that means leaving a job because you're not getting the right education at the, at the, at the employment stage, then sometimes you have to be brave about it and, and step away from a well-paid job if it's not helping you progress as an individual. Um, so if you can keep yourself very open-minded, but still hone your skills and follow your passions, then I think you've got an exciting future that's possibly more exciting than we've ever seen before. Thank you very much for your time. I think a lot of people who are interested in entering into this industry, whether they're students or, or older, will be very interested to hear some of the points that you've raised and some of um, the, the advice that you've given as part of this. So from me, thank you very much for that. No, you're very welcome. I enjoy it. It's good fun. And I, uh, I like to see people following this path. I, I think sometimes it's it's drummed out of them a little bit too early in life. But if you're creative and you're passionate, then if you can encourage that and, and, and really make that sort of um, evolve and flower and, and give, give the kids the confidence to explore that as a career potential, then I believe they'll have a happier life. They'll do something they really enjoy and they won't just be doing a job, they'll be doing a passion, which is probably the most important bit of advice I could give anyone. Follow your passion um, and, and, and then everything else will, will become a little bit easier in life. I want to thank Craig again for giving up his time to provide the advice and insight to others who might be hoping to achieve the same position as himself or within the same field. If you're interested in seeing more of Craig's work or the work that his company has produced, you can visit their website on north55.com. I'll also provide links below to their social media pages and to their website. Thank you for joining me again for another of these interview series and I hope to see you again next time. Stay safe.